I'll just go straight into this. Um, this was a, it's a use case um, talk, not really a super technical talk. I can't really do justice to what's been said in the previous days. Um, I'm not trying to scare people off, but it's, we're going to go a little bit into the architecture. But I just wanted to explain how we're using the different sets of technologies to deliver um, an opti-channel experience. Um, so, um, just for, so you know, um, the bank itself is headquartered in um, Dubai. Um, I'm, based, I'm actually from New Zealand originally. Um, 10,000 um, employees offering a wide range of products. Um, also a banking, Islamic banking division, so it covers nearly all types of people within, within the area and they've just recently acquired um, Dennis Bank, so that means now got, we've now got our presence in Singapore, India, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, London, Turkey, Germany and Austria. Um, am I speaking too quick? No? Okay. Um, so. Again, it's just one of those things where it's, um, I'm just going to cover a, a couple of concepts and some ideas as I said, go through the old architecture, the new architecture, and then um, I'll introduce you to the algorithm we're using on the back end of it. Um, I can't answer quite questions about the algorithm itself. Ideally, I would have liked to have had my colleague here who's the, um, the head of artificial intelligence from the bank, but he couldn't make it. And then I'll just do a little bit of a wrap up. Um, I do have to do these disclaimers. Um, it's a conservative bank. Uh, it was unlikely that they would have let me present um, in, this, in this conference um, to, to, to disclose this type of information. Um, so I, I can't answer too many questions. Um, so this hopefully is the first of other conferences I'll be able to speak at. Um, but it's, but it's, a, it's a generally, generally sort of known thing in the, in the region. Um, they don't like to disclose too much information. So just a little bit of a warning. Also, there's a slight deviation from the original proposal. Um, when, I, when, I, when I submitted it about three months ago, um, things have changed in the bank, so I've, I've tailored it to that. Um, and again, I'll just say it's a little bit of a light technical talk, but it's more about the concepts and the use cases, uh, or the, use, the particular use case that we're going to be going through. Um, so, what um, this is on the, on the left hand side for you, but my right hand side, this is generally how. Um, marketing campaigns are orchestrated. It's what sort of, what sort of products do people have? Um, can we upsell them? Can we cross-sell them? Um, and it's really driven by the bottom line. And so we don't really want to do that. Um, so what we do is we spam customers to do all sorts of things, asking customers to participate in surveys, send them more and more information. Then further in the middle, it's, it's a little bit easier to, to manage in terms of it's a bit more sophisticated. But ideally what we're trying to get to is to, I'm trying to get to the right-hand side or my left hand side, my right hand side to here, your left hand side, um, where we find the, 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 the sweet spot, if you like, between um, the, the traditional approaches and the new approach. Um, so with that term in mind, the project that I'm working on is actually, we're wanting to uh, deliver this. Um, so if, in a nutshell, the ones on the left side, the right hand side, um, are batch based, typically three month cycle, very hard for attrition. Um, well, sorry, attribution, spamming customers, many, many customers opt out. It's just a dreadful customer experience. Um, and it's, again, it's driven by the bottom line. Um, and it's a very, very awkward um, situation for, for customers to be in. Um, in, the, in, this, in the region of the Middle East, um, we, we get spammed with all sorts of different types of products, even though, even though we've asked them not to, not to talk to us. So the channels themselves are not talking to each other. Um, so what we'd like to be able to get to is, is to type more, more dynamic campaigns, more targeted towards the customer, uh, more centric, um, simpler experiences, easier to measure. Um, so the attribution is much, much closer and much more in real time coming back into the, into the architecture um, and allows for experimentation. So at the moment, we can't really experiment with customers because we just bombard customers with everything. Um, and also it's a very good for, for the opti-channel experience, which I'll cover in a minute. Um, so the couple of the requirements that we've had to work, for, work with. Um, it, it's event-driven, um, as, um, as what's mentioned above. Um, we also need it to be extremely performant, um, because their SLAs we've got from, from the multi-channel um, customer experience people is that we've got, to, we've got to have the, when the event is generated, it needs to be propagated out into the channel or just before the channel within five seconds of the event being captured. So that in its own, in own right is actually quite a, a challenging thing to do given the back office systems I'm, we're dealing with at the bank are very old. And so we need to, we need to literally re reinvent the events coming off the databases, and then repackage them up, and then fire them through um, through the streams. Uh, it needs to be modular um, because as we move bits and pieces around, which I'll cover off in another slide. But as we move and start to swapping things in and out, depend, uh, particularly campaigns and things like that, 
We don't want to go through a large uh, process of, of re-engineering systems and what have you, um, which is the, the case at the moment. So there are some hack campaigns that have been pro uh, proposed at the bank, but because of the changes in the, in the source systems, they've decided to pull the plug on them. Obviously needed it to be durable. Um, history needs to be maintained, which I'll cover a couple of those business rules later. Um, scalable, of course, which I've touched on, it needs to be able to evolve um, as new, new technologies come and go. Um, and events need to be as light as possible. Um, so we don't want to be carrying a big, long event being pushed through all the way to the phone and app, because that's just going to be slow and it's going to slow everything down. So um, we need to be making sure that it's as light as possible, carrying as small data as possible, but which can actually be used by the customer. And thus far, we've, I've identified 30 plus inputs, which is geolocation information, telecommunication information, airport information. So those, inf those data sources are coming on stream at the moment. Um, but the, but um, the, we've only got four at the moment on, uh, through, the, through the models. Um, so is anyone familiar with the notion of an opti-channel here? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so we're fixated at the bank with multi-channel and omni-channel. And so we've, um, we're having problems with that, of course, because as the, the, the experience is broken. Um, so you'll, you'll go through the funnel, you do something, you, you, you time out, then you try it again, and then suddenly the information's lost, then you log on again in bits and pieces, and it just becomes a bit of a nightmare to deal with. And actually, the customer acquisition funnels are dreadful as well, because people are just popping out at various, at various um, steps. So what, we, what we've pr proposed to do is actually change it a, a, a around quite a bit, and um, rather than offering more channels, just offer a more st streamlined approach for people and actually pick the channels that the customer is actually uh, interacting with rather than actually saying this is what the channels are. So this is where OptiChannel comes in because it does offer a lot of simplification for your, for your experiences for, with customers. Um, and so it's a very, very low touch um, a, a event that gets propagated out to the phone, um, click on the phone and, and it comes back. And, and one of the things we're really, really keen on is using a WhatsApp Messenger for our banking um, interactions. So, so what that means um, is that Rather than, as I said, you, you, you've got these broken silos across the different channels, you can actually just operate seamlessly through a very simple channel with very small bits of data, which are, which are pointed for that particular period of time. So this is the old architecture. Um, it's familiar with every, I'm sure everyone knows. Um, nothing, nothing extraordinary, but what I wanted to point out to you is that T, T plus one, T plus two, and then you get your notification being sent out. So you could be on a plane, you could be on the way back to, um, to, uh, to the US, to Tahoe, or something like that. Um, but that's just too, too, too late, and that actually uh, situation will never come again. So how do we then harness that situation and make the most of it? Um, so what we've got now is this. So um, we're using, based on the, the, the high level requirements, we needed a very, very fast, extremely quick um, read and write database. And we, we've, we looked at um, HBase, it wasn't up to a standard what we wanted. We looked at Cassandra, we didn't really like that. And we've landed on, um, on Apache Ignite. So on the top of that, we've also got the Beam and Flink running and then the multi-arm bandit over the top. So the trigger type, so there's four different inputs that go into the multi-arm bandit. So you can see the trigger type, the context, the tone, and the nudge. So uh, the trigger type is, what is the actual customer doing in the back end? And that, and that could be, in the, this case, I'll, I'll use it, it could be a, a credit card transaction. So that credit card transaction then will, will fire off an event. Then we need to understand the context. Where is that person up to in their, in their spend cycle? Is it the beginning of the month? Is it the end of the month? What's the balance being carried? Um, then we can understand what, what things we can actually offer them, what things we can do. Then the tone is related to the context. And the tone is these five tones. If, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've reached your limit in the, in the first week of the month, we may send you out a strong tone saying that you actually, you may want to sweep money or you may want to do something along those lines um, because you're, you're, you're falling behind on what you're trying to do. Um, and then the nudge itself um, will be saying, based on these sets of criteria, this is the nudge that we'll send out. Then it gets fired off into a Kafka topic. We've got a dead, dead letter queue at the top there because what happened is a lot of people have, may have opted out for the service. Um, the multi-arm bandit doesn't care about that, and we don't want the multi-arm bandit to do the calculations on whether those people have opted out or not. So we then do some analysis on, on those opt-outs, and that's coming from a CRM system, which is just a very small file that's a very small lookup. Then it goes to the gateway, then it goes to the notification engine, then gets posted into, into a WhatsApp. Then it comes back in again, and then it ignites, up, uh, ignites, update ignites, I should say, I didn't want to put four lines into that, and also updates HDFS, because what we do need to understand, for historical purposes, this nudge was sent out, this nudge was, was actually used, 
this nudge is now, can't, the, business states, the business rule states we can't send the nudge out again. Um, obviously with historical data in the back end, we've got HDFS and that's just coming from the source systems, the, the payment systems, the ATM systems, the, 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 the treasury systems, etc. cetera. Um, and as I said, over, and off, up the top, we've got the multi-arm banded algorithm um, playing. So is there any questions so far? Yeah. So um, the multi-arm banded is, I'm not sure if people know what, what it is, um, but it's, it's basically an algorithm that we, we, we selected this algorithm because we didn't want to go through the pains of trying to, tra uh, to try and chain a model, train a model over months and months of data. And this is uh, built on reinforced learning. It's around exploitation and, 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 opti um, and um, uh, exploration. So what happens then is that um, what it will try and do is it will optimize the nudge to send out based on a set of input. And once that nudge is set out, it's been redeemed, it comes back in again, then, um, then it will update accordingly. Um, so, sorry, just go back, sorry. Um, and it's based on the, the multi-arm bandits, um, where it's, it's which, which arm do you pull um, to, to, make, to get the most out of the, um, the investment within, well, lack of investment, I suppose, into the actual machines themselves. Um, so that was the model that the, the, the Richard um, van der Voort came up with, who's the head of artificial intelligence at the bank, um, and now we're running it. So um, what, uh, what that then means is that the sets of um, inputs are coming in on, the right, on the, uh, your left-hand side, which I've mentioned around the, the, the trigger, the context, the tone, and the nudge. Um, but it's actually, it's, it's a little bit misleading, but the nudge is actually being selected by the nudge decisioning, and the nudge then gets pushed out. What the algorithm's wanting is a, whether it gets a, a one, a zero, or a negative one when it comes back in again, um, and then it will update the nudge acceptance, push that decision, what happened to the decisioning, and then the, the process goes around again. Um, but you'll notice um, that the nudges at the top are sent out at the persona level, and I'll, t I'll get to that in a second, but they come back at the individual level. And so the personas are, um, there's a the group of people have done some research and um, surveying into uh, the different types of people in, in, in Dubai, whether people like to save for money, uh, save for travel, whether pe people are really terrible with um, their money, whether, they, whether people like spend now and, and think about saving later. So, but what, what we don't know is when it comes back in again, it will, it will be just pegged, as I said, to an individual, even though that individual will be assigned to a particular persona or a group of personas. And over time, we will actually look at migrating um, the personas out and then actually starting to have at, at the individual level of the particular transactions that are occurring. So literally, an individual will have a set of nudges, a set of contexts assigned to themselves as an individual rather than as a group of people. Um, dear, oh dear, this is it. <laughs> Um, sorry. So just to wrap up, um, these applications are perfect for omnichannel, um, particularly the Beam and the Flinks and the Kafkas and the Ignites because it's, it's very, very good for session times. It's very good for, um, for, for those types of things. Um, it's good for small, frequent interactions with, with customers um, and it allows for small, iterative experience. However, um, organizations lose control of their brand. And if I just go back up again, when, when this gets sent out to um, WhatsApp, you don't know which bank you're interacting with, and so some people um, don't like that. Um, so you, you're relying on a WhatsApp branding, a WhatsApp interface, and everything like that. However, what's embedded within the interface, or what's embedded within the message, obviously, is clearly banking data. And technically, state will always be a challenge. I was speaking to Jesse um, Anderson over dinner on Sunday night, and it was um, we were just talking around the difficulty we're going to have with a replication of the data as the, as the algorithms themselves become richer and become faster. And so at the moment, we think we've got a control over the, over the state and the management of the state, but I know over time it's going to become a, quite a challenge for us to, to, to do. Um, all right, so any questions? Uh, you explicitly call out both Flink and Beam in, in the architecture. Does that mean that you use Beam on top of Flink, or does that mean that you use both as both. API options? We, we're using Beam on top of Flink. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have, have you also considered using Flink directly? Why have you chosen Beam as a first-class API and, and Flink as just uh, the engine? Could you walk us through your source process there, please? Yeah, so that's a yeah, good question. So. Um, this, the source systems themselves, as I touched on, um, so we've, we're using um, the, the main one as a finical um, application, and it's a very old one. That's where all your banking data, your account data, your, your, your products are kept. And so, when you when you do something, when you open an account, it creates entries in about five tables, 
and those tables have about 450 columns in them. So because it's the core banking system, we have to use a CDC Informatica, unfortunately, which takes that particular row off. Then, then what we then do is we create um, a, a beam job, if, you, if that makes sense, to strip it out and to aggregate it and then to, then to push it onto Flink. So we're using it, this is just the one, one use case, but we're actually using it across many, many other use cases. So there's also the customer acquisition funnels I, I mentioned. When we're, selling, when we're sending, sending products out to, um, out, out to the mobile phones and what have you, we, the click streams that are coming back in again, um, uh, uh, we, don't need, we don't need all of them at this stage, but we're using Bing, Beam to literally filter those things out again and then to drop it onto Flink to do the processing. So that's the reason why we've cho chosen it. So we're trying to use it for two, two or three different use cases, but I was just highlighting one here. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about how long it took to develop all this and some of the challenges, it's lessons learned from implementing this? Yeah, um, so I'll just go back. Um, so the, the, this is the, the biggest challenge with this probably is actually, would you, would you believe, posting it, pushing it out to um, WhatsApp? Um, because again, it's the reputation of the bank and, and that type of thing. So technically that's, that's not very hard to do, but it's just around whether the, the bank wants to go into the Opti channel um, rather than as a set of multi-channel, omni-channel. Um, Beam was very difficult, we found, because of, there's not a lot of documentation, um, and so it was a lot of experiments, experimenting, but also getting, getting used to the data flows coming out of the source systems um, and understanding the shape of those data flows and then, and, what, and then whether you have a tumbling window or a sliding window and those types of things. Um, but to be honest with you, we've, we're using Flink very dumb. We haven't actually done a lot, a lot of work with it. We just use, it's just there. Um, but as, as we get more and more sophisticated um, with the implementation of this, of course, it's going to be growing. And of course, the multi-arm bandit itself, um, to reach into, the, reach into the libraries and bits and pieces, initially we had the multi-arm bandit doing a lot of the um, processing, um, but we've decided to take off a lot of the processing f because it's just clearly not scalable. Um, so stitching those things together, it's, it's taken probably six to nine months. So the, the, the production at the moment is that there's not a great deal of triggers and, or nudges going through production at the, the environments at this stage. But also underneath this, there's a whole lot of, um, there's a whole lot of um, uh, automation work as well that's going on as well, which I haven't touched on. So, so we can ch make changes as quickly as we, poss we possibly can uh, within reason. And the next steps, of course, is to starting to look at observ observability as, we've, as these events are flying all the way through. Um, rather than moving into, obviously, verticals and what have you. So again, I haven't touched on that. So that's the next steps that we'll be looking at, probably something like Loki or something. Thank you.